Remember, remember the unnecessary scene. So I'm going to do another nitpick rant. This one on V4 Vendetta. Oh, I should have put this out on November 5th. Ah, crap. Heck with it. Uh, in any case, this movie, I love this movie. This Very sincerely, this is one of my favorite movies. I find it energizing. I find it artistically made. I find it heartbreaking at times. There's a scene in it that made my list of movies, movie moments that always make me cry. I think the performances are amazing. I think the the look and the feel of the thing is incredible. The the way it um, it moves its story along. I think it, it picked just the right parts of the original work. So I think it's a terrific example of, of well done adaptation. I really like this movie, except for one scene that I basically. I'll be honest, I skip it. Like, I hit the, the skip chapter button whenever I watch this thing. And that is the Rookwood scene. Now, this uh, particular nitpick will qualify as spoilers, so be aware of that if you haven't seen the movie already. But that's also kind of the problem with this scene, because what this scene does is it lays out stuff that anybody paying attention could have already figured out, or at the very least had a very strong suspicion of. And so it, it's got an inherent problem where it's making clear something that I really would have preferred they, they trust the audience to get on their own. Because what the whole scene is, is it is this character um, who is uh, apparently a former government official who's currently in hiding named Rookwood giving information to a police inspector who's investigating all this stuff going on about how the government came to power. And it included, amongst other things, a manufactured terrorist attack. And uh, and that, you know, that and how that uh, lined up with specific characters and uh, figures in the government who we have seen. Um, and of course, the head of the whole thing. So all of this gets laid out by this character of Rookwood. And it's, first of all, as I said, it's not entirely necessary because most of this is stuff that we could either infer or actually doesn't matter. So, like, for example, the this kind of shakes the, um, the police detective because he, it, it makes him question, you know, the, the folks that are in authority, except he's got a lot of reason to do that already. And it isn't necessary to sell how evil this government is. We've been watching them. We've been watching these figures, what they do, what they authorize. Like the, the scene that I, I put on my sad moments list, you know, the scene of, of Evie jailed and communicating with the prisoner in, uh, next to her, that scene's way more effective at outlining the atrocities that this government is capable of. And adding in that they basically fake their way into power doesn't really make them all that much worse because how they got into power while a horrible thing that they did, the way that they're wielding power is also horrible. So we didn't need another reason to think that they're horrible. And like I said, most of what's in here is stuff that is it, it, we kind of already knew to some extent. Now, it is making the connections more explicitly than the film had up to that point. But first of all, I would argue in much of the cases, the details that it's laying out are unnecessary. And B, even if you feel they are necessary, this is a really clunky way to do it. To have a character who we have never seen before show up out of nowhere, sit in heavy shadows, and just dictate the back history to us for four minutes. Now, there's a fair amount of exposition in this movie. Like, like that scene that I love, that's an exposition scene. But it's handled really well. And there are other scenes where, you know, we're going through characters' logs and notebooks and we hear their narration of it. You know, there's plenty of scenes of exposition, but none of them are as 
boring or as forced or out of nowhere or as inorganic as this one is. And then, of course, there's the other problem, which is the longer Rookwood talks, the more painfully obvious it becomes that it's just V in disguise because we have this guy in a hat and dark and completely dark sunglasses and a big beard in with at least half his face in shadow and the more you hear him talk because you know remember we've never seen V's face but we hear him talk a lot so the more you hear this character of Rookwood talk the more you're going to be liable to make that connection of I know that voice. And first time I watched this ever, I caught on to that. I'd say it was about halfway through it. And I wasn't enjoying the scene anyway, because like I say, it's awkward and it's clunky. And I have other reasons to dislike it. But the fact that he just keeps talking, 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 and eventually I'm going, wait a minute. And then it, the instant you even have the notion, you you look at the way that they're shooting him, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's definitely him. And so that doesn't work as a twist or, or anything else. It the characters that the information is being relayed to figure out that they were that he wasn't who they thought he was almost immediately. So the impact that this has on the characters that are being told this information to is negligible. And whatever movement it does do, you could figure out another way to get that information that wasn't this clunky, awkward, stupid scene. This scene is so stupid and it's so aggravating because like i said this is a film that does really well moments of on the surface appearing to stop the plot in order to give us background and it does that phenomenally in a number of other points but here it's so crowbarred in and it's arrived at so unnaturally with this guy who's come out of nowhere and you can it's like i said it's super easy to figure out what the twist with him is and it doesn't move the plot forward it doesn't alter the character motivation significantly from the path that they were already themselves actually on there is nothing of value in this scene and what little bit you could argue that it gives i would say there are much better ways to have accomplished the few scant things that it actually attempts to do and for the most part i just skip this thing and have a much better viewing experience and that's why i really hate that scene in a movie that i otherwise have no problems with like the movie's practically perfect except for that one friggin scene and that's just one scene that I always skip because it drives me nuts in a movie that I otherwise love. So, what are your thoughts on the Rookwood scene from B for Vendetta? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Uh, there's all the stuff that you can do because there's buttons and there's links and there's things down there. Check them out if you're interested. There's a link to the Patreon. But, you know, if you don't, whatever. Cool. I'm not going to pressure you. And remember, folks, you're the council. I just run the meetings. And until next time... This council is adjourned.